Is an all AMD gaming PC really worth it? Given the immense popularity of the 7800X3D, it's a question I see a lot. So in this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the Is It Worth It series, we've been helping you make the right choice by showing you just how much you can expect to increase the performance of your system with drop-in upgrades. In this video, our focus will be on upgrading my AM4-based Falcon Northwest Talon gaming PC, consisting of a Ryzen 7 5800X3D CPU and an RTX 3080 Ti GPU, one of the highest performing last gen gaming combinations. In addition to showing you benchmarks across 16 games, I'm also going to share with you some pro tips on how to improve the airflow within your PC case. And if you stick around, I will also show you how to increase your performance by undervolting your AM5 CPU and 7000 series GPU, something every AMD owner should know how to do. It's really not rocket science, so before we jump into the upgrade, let's first take a look at how to improve your airflow. The Falcon Northwest 20th Anniversary Edition Talon PC is a custom design case that at first does not appear to have been designed with airflow in mind. The CEO of Falcon, Kelt Reeves, was a former pilot with a degree in aeronautical science, so given his understanding of airflow, it appears strange that he would oversee the development of a case with poor thermals. It turns out that looks can be deceiving, and the case is apparently more than sufficient at keeping the components inside cool. My concern, however, is that with the advent of larger, more powerful components that run hotter, it might not be able to keep up. So let's take a more detailed look at the case and see if there is anything we can do to improve improve the airflow. The case is designed with a 280mm AIO radiator in the front with two large 140mm fans pulling cool air across the rad and into the case. The front panel is solid, however there are full length side inlets that allow cool air to be sucked into the case to feed the rad and fans. The rad is positioned with tubes high, which although not ideal, is okay because it's an Acetec based AIO with the pump located above the cold plate, which in turn is positioned lower than the tubes at the top of the rad. There is a single 120mm exhaust fan at the rear of the case with no additional ventilation at the top and bottom. The case design also relies on air to be passively sucked into the PCIe slots to feed cool air to the graphics cards. It's a very compact design that you wouldn't naturally think would lend itself well to cooling hot components. If we take a look at the temperatures of the components under load, it's clear that the case was designed well and that the cooling solution is doing a good job. But I think we can do even better. The only real opportunity to enhance the cooling in this case, without doing extensive case mods, is to add a small intake fan below the GPU on the back of the case to actively push more cool air in. So I purchased an Octua NF A6 X25 fan which is 60mm square by 25mm thick. This is an ideal size that fits perfectly across three open PCIe slots at the rear of the case. The downside is that you will not be able to install an additional PCIe card but the upside hopefully is improved GPU thermals. To test it I ran Fermark 2 for around 10 minutes with the fan on and off and I compared the results. As you can see it did make a positive difference with the GPU and memory approximately 2 degrees Celsius cooler, while the hotspot was approximately 3 degrees Celsius cooler. Not a huge difference, but impressive for a quick 10 minute test. This decrease in temperature allowed the GPU to pull an additional 30 watts of power, which in turn resulted in higher GPU clock speeds. Not too bad for a very quick and simple add-on, I just wish that knocked to a sold version of this fan that was all black to better match the aesthetics of the case. Interestingly, this is actually what Falcon Northwest did with later versions of this case where they modified the dimensions to accommodate a small intake fan on the back. The system the system being upgraded today is a Falcon Northwest Talon PC with the following components. For the CPU we have a Ryzen 7 5800X3D. For the motherboard we have an ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Dark Hero. For memory we have G-Skill Trident Z Neo 64GB kit of DDR4-3600 at CL16. For the CPU cooler we have an EVGA CLCX 280mm AIO. For the GPU we have an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti Founders Edition. For storage we have a 2TB Samsung 980 Pro PCIe NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the power supply we have a Seasonic Prime TX1000 1000 watt 80 plus titanium PSU. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. The primary objective for this video is to see if an all AMD upgrade is a good option for gaming when compared with other high end alternatives. So I focused on upgrading the CPU and GPU with the best components that AMD has to offer. As a result I selected the Ryzen 7 7800X3D CPU, widely considered the best gaming chip on the market, and the RX 7900XDX, the best gaming GPU in AMD's current lineup. I went with the reference model from AMD due to space constraints within the Talon chassis. Moving to AM5 also meant having to upgrade the motherboard and RAM. For these I went with the excellent MSI X670E carbon Wi-Fi and a kit of DDR5 6000 CL30 Expo memory from Corsair. With the PC ready and the new components in hand it's time to upgrade the system.
With the upgrade complete, it's time to benchmark the system. For these benchmarks, all testing was performed with the CPUs and GPUs at default settings, with DOCP or Expo turned on. I did this to avoid any issue with Silicon Lottery. Because I am testing a CPU and GPU, I decided to test at three different resolutions and three different game settings. The objective is to test in such a way that I can try to isolate the performance improvement due to each main component. So at 4K Ultra settings, the GPU will be heavily loaded. At 1080p low settings, the CPU will be heavily loaded. And at 1440p medium settings, the components will hopefully be more evenly loaded. Let's see how the 7800X 3D and 7900XTX performed relative to the original components. One question I see a lot of people ask is how do I undervolt my CPU and GPU? For your AMD CPU, you first need to benchmark it at default settings to establish a baseline. For this, I use Cinebench R24, 3 d Mark Time Spy, and 3 d Mark CPU Profile. You can then use a free tool from AMD called Ryzen Master to perform the undervolt. Open Ryzen Master and click on Advanced View. Now click on Curve Optimizer on the left. Under Curve Optimizer Control, select the All Cores option. Under CO All Core Value, you can type in a core offset value. For my CPU, I set it at negative 30. I would recommend starting at something lower, either negative 10 or negative 20, and progressing to the higher values in increments of say negative five or negative 10. Now hit apply at the bottom of the screen and a new screen will pop up asking you if you want to apply and test the offset values you just entered. Hit OK and your system will reboot to automatically make these changes in BIOS. Once it boots back into Windows, it will automatically load Ryzen Master and run a stress test. If the test completes successfully, you will see a confirmation in green at the bottom of the screen. You should then test this curve offset to make sure that your CPU is stable. For this, you can simply use a Cinebench multi-core test. Once you find a stable all-core curve offset, you can rerun the benchmarks used to baseline your CPU at default settings to see what the performance gain was. For my 7800X3D, a curve offset of negative 30 on all cores resulted in a performance increase of around 5%, which is great. In addition, the CPU package temperature went down significantly in the CPU profile test while staying about the same in the other test, which is also great. A 5% performance bump with a 5 degrees Celsius decrease in temperature is a truly amazing result. You can input a curve offset for each core to optimize your system further. However, this will take significantly longer to do with diminishing returns. So I would recommend simply sticking with an all core offset. Your results will vary based on silicon quality and cooling solution, but based on these results, it's obviously worth spending time to find a stable undervolt for your CPU. For an AMD GPU, the process is even easier. As with your CPU, you first need to benchmark your GPU at the fault settings to establish a baseline. For this, I decided to use 3D Mark Time Spy, Speedway, 
Port Royal and Steel Nomad, four great GPU benchmarks. Now simply open the AMD Software Adrenaline Edition application and installed with your GPU drivers. Under the Performance tab at the top, select the GPU Undervolted option under GPU and let the software automatically undervolt your GPU. This should take no more than about 30 seconds to run. Now rerun the benchmarks that you use to baseline your GPU at default settings to see what the performance gain was. As you can see from my data, the automatic undervolt resulted in a performance gain of only around 2%, which is relatively small. But this was accomplished with a small 1 degree Celsius drop in temperatures, which is good. To get better results for your GPU, you would have to manually undervolt and overclock it, which is not difficult, but takes considerably more time, as outlined in my GPU overclocking guide. Hopefully that helps demystify undervolting and the type of results that you can expect to get with AMD components. In this video, I upgraded my AM4 based Falcon Northwest Talon pre-built gaming PC to see if it's worth it. As you can see from the results, it was, not surprisingly, a clear victory for the 7800X3D, 7900XTX AMD combo, with average increases in performance of around 50% at all resolutions and game settings. Given how decisive the average gaming performance boost was across 15 games, it's easy to recommend this upgrade relative to the original system, since those components are now a generation old. Furthermore, when we look at CPU power efficiency, the 7800X3D clearly shows the improvements that AMD was able to make with the 7000 series, with efficiency increases of over 50% when compared with the 5800X3D. When we look at GPU power efficiency, the efficiency gain for the 7900XTX is anywhere from 5 to 25% over the 3080Ti, which is also impressive. But what happens when we compare the all AMD upgrade against a high-end current generation gaming system? For this comparison, I decided to use my recently built Ultimate Gaming PC that has an Intel Core i9 4900K as CPU, an ASUS ROG Matrix Platinum GeForce RTX 4090 GPU, and a kit of DDR5 8200 CL38 RAM. Now, assuming the Intel CPU doesn't explode, I decided to compare them across four popular games consisting of Microsoft Flight Simulator, Total War Warhammer 3, Cyberpunk 2077, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Given that the Matrix Platinum 4090 is highly overclocked, I decided to test my 7900XTX with a manual undervolt and overclock as well. For my RX 7900XTX, I was able to achieve an undervolt of 1100 millivolts, a GPU core clock of 3100 MHz, and a VRAM clock of 2700 MHz. This resulted in average gaming performance boosts of around 10% at 4K, which is significant. For Microsoft Flight Simulator, the AMD system does exceptionally well at 1080p, with the 7800X3D really proving just how good it is relative to a 14900KS, with an increase in performance of around 20%. At 4K, the 4090 shows just how good it is against the 7900XTX, with an increased performance of around 40%. This is a common trend across all games. The 7800X3D tends to win when the game is CPU bound, while the RTX 4090 wins when the game is GPU bound. For Warhammer 3, the AMD system does extremely well at 1080p and 1440p, while in Cyberpunk 2077, a game that favors Nvidia GPUs, the Ultimate Gaming PC shows its prowess due in large part to the highly overclocked Matrix Platinum 4090. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, a game that tends to favor AMD GPUs, the AMD system again does extremely well at lower resolutions and game settings, while being around 20% slower at 4K. Not too bad given the large price difference in GPUs. But the question remains, is it really worth upgrading to an all AMD system? In order to answer this question properly, we really need to look at cost. The 7800X3D, 7900XTX, MSI X670E Carbon Wi-Fi, and DDR5 6000 kit currently retails for around 2000 US dollars. Whereas if you were to sell the 5800X3D, 3080 Ti, Crosshair 8 Dark Hero, and DDR4 3600 kit, you're only likely to get around $1300. So if you convert that difference into gaming efficiency or FPS per dollar, then the baseline system delivers slightly better value at both 1080p and 4K, with average increases of around 5% when compared with the upgraded system. You will get much higher performance at lower power draw with the upgrades, but you will pay approximately $20 per frame to get it, since performance doesn't come for free. Now, if we look at the cost of this system relative to the Ultimate Gaming PC, it's a whopping $3,000 US dollars less. So if you convert that into gaming efficiency or FPS per dollar at 1440p across the four games that I tested, you end up with an increase in value for the all AMD gaming system of over 100%. So the answer to the question is a resounding yes, it really is worth it. Whether you are comparing to the last gen system with a 5800X3D and 3080Ti, or to an ultra high-end gaming PC with a 4900KS and 4090, an all AMD gaming upgrade offers excellent gaming performance at a reasonable price, allowing it to deliver exceptional value. If your primary focus is gaming, I can highly recommend a 7800X3D paired with a 7900XDX. They perform extremely well across a wide variety of games, and driver support from AMD appears to have improved significantly. With the Adrenaline Edition software allowing you to easily undervolt and overclock your components to extract even more performance. Hopefully AMD can keep
keep this momentum going in the future with their next generation products. In the words of Princess Leia, we need you AMD, you're our only hope. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Is It Worth It Upgrade series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. Please also comment and offer suggestions on future upgrades that you would like me to look at. Bye for now.